Still ran Dingo, yellow dog Dingo, always hungry, grinning like a rat trap. Never getting nearer, never getting farther. Ran after Kangaroo. He had to. From the Just So Stories, Rudyard Kipling's description of Australia's native dog. Graziers have claimed for years that the dingo is responsible for heavy stock losses, especially among sheep. The Australian Meat Research Committee responded by earmarking funds for a scientific study of the dog. Yellow Dog Dingo has always captured more than his fair share of publicity, largely because he is controversial and, certainly in those days, a bit of a mystery. A team from the CSIRO's Division of Wildlife Research in Canberra was mobilised in 1966 to carry out the study. At first, no one could even accurately tell the difference between a purebred dingo and a crossbreed. It was some of the initial research which established that the difference lay in the size of the teeth and certain burns in the skull. Across central Australia and the east coast, the dogs were observed, tracked and examined in their own domain for thousands of hours. This makeshift sled is smoothing the ground so that paw prints can be easily seen later. Over the years, methods of tracing their travels were refined. At first, their tracks were followed. More recently, large numbers were caught in padded traps and muzzled briefly so that they could be fitted with collars containing small radio transmitters. Radio receivers pick up the signals from the collars and the dog's movements can be monitored for 24 hours a day. At close range, the tracker needs to stay downwind. Sometimes the trail went cold. In a rocky den, the collar is located minus the wily dingo. These youngsters are waiting their chance at a rabbit warren. Rabbits, rodents, lizards and carrion are the preferred diet according to the studies in Central Australia. Meanwhile in the eastern highlands wallabies and wombats are the choice over sheep and cattle. But then the dingo will eat the most common food on hand, even grasshoppers if need be. Dr. Alan Newsom, leader of the CSIRO team, says the dingo sometimes may be a positive helper to landholders by keeping down pests. In central Australia, for instance, after a drought, the dingo's delayed rabbit build up by at least six months when the good times returned. But it is difficult to generalise, as Dr. Newsom explains. The question we'd all like answered, of course, is whether dingoes are goodies or baddies. Looking at these lot, it's a bit hard to imagine that they're baddies but I've seen uh, one sheep man in this mountain country driven out by the effects of one dingo on his flock. On the other hand, we've all seen, those of us who've worked on dingoes, have seen dingoes very abundant in parts of inland Australia and doing no perceptible damage to stock at all. It uh, seems to depend very much on circumstance, uh, how much native game there is, whether it's a drought, uh, whether it's good times. The, the difficulty is that there's no real, no one answer for dingo management in the scientific sense uh, for any place in Australia and no one answer therefore for all of Australia. Trying to predict whether dingoes are going to be a nuisance is a bit like predicting lightning strike and difficulty is also trying to prevent it. Uh, management appears to be, uh, will have to be a rather more flexible affair than we imagined because there's just no simple answer and management will presumably have to change from place to place, from time to time.